Hey y'all, it's me Tiffany. Welcome back to my channel. So I want to do something a little different. I've had fun with every reading vlog that I have done. So I want to tackle the Be Sworn piece. Sorry if I look a little weird. I just have like foundation and blush on because I'm about to go to the airport. I'm traveling for about 12 days and I decided why not tackle a uh, war and peace during my travel. I'm not carrying any consoles except for my switch and I have my laptop, but everything else, I don't have like my PlayStation and stuff. And realistically, I can't take a bunch of books and I know audiobooks are a thing, but I've got a really long layover there and back and the flight is long. So I thought this would be the perfect time to tackle this beast of a book I've actually owned it for a while, so I'm ready to hit that up. I meant to start this vlog yesterday because I got a new tattoo and I thought it'd be fun to do a travel tattoo reading vlog all in one, but I woke up too late because my tattoo appointment was in the morning and I did not. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this and yeah, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I am doing a voiceover with notes that I took while reading because naturally I don't want to be weird. It was 6 a.m. when I got to the airport, or 6 a.m. when I got through uh, TSA actually. I got to the airport at like 5.30. I finished chapters one through six at this point and it's definitely interesting so far. I did only had two hours of sleep in the first two or three chapters were really boring when it came to like this ritzy party and stuff but I think it might be my lack of sleep. The party is basically discussing like Napoleon and I think that's interesting. I haven't read too many fictional books that talk about Napoleon around the time like Napoleon would have like actually been a person to talk about. And I know this party is just for you to introduce characters, but I don't know why I don't care for party scenes that much and a lot of classic books have them, but I'm sure the rest of the book is fine. I'm probably just sleepy. Of course, this man sitting in front of me is trying to argue about having the mask over his nose. Okay, so I'm finally doing normal vlog stuff. I just, I just did voiceover with notes that I took because I was taking a bunch of notes. Because I just didn't feel comfortable holding the camera up, having a mic, and a, talking, you know, around a very busy airport. And I was there literally all day. Like, I had an, my second flight was an overnight flight. So I didn't read on that plane because, you know, all the lights were out. And I was tired anyways. Uh, you know, going forward five hours is a lot. And um, so... I read the first part of one War and Peace. Normally I can read a little faster, but uh, the font in this is actually like really tiny. Some of the words, like it's the story itself is real dense. Like the vocabulary is a little dense, uh, you know, just everything. And it's kind of like a lot is going on. There's a lot of characters so far. And so I got to about like 170 something in the edition I'm in. I am enjoying it a lot. I also have the audiobook. Apparently my audiobook is narrated by a different person because there was one part I was like kind of tired and I don't know a lot of Russian words and I did take some French in high school, but there were some words that I didn't learn. So I wanted to hear it. There are different translators and it's very obvious when you hear the audio and looking at the words, but so far, I love Natasha. I think she's interesting. I'm ready to see where she's gonna go in this story. So far, she is my absolute favorite. And it's just, you know, I like how, I, just, I don't know, I just like her. I feel like I'm going. she's gonna be my favorite person. I've never seen any adaptations. Obviously, I haven't read this before, so I don't know if I'm gonna feel like that the whole story. And I think it's interesting about Myra, how she's kind of like the glue to the family, which I know is a very common thing for females in stories. But, you know, the way she's written doesn't feel like a stereotype or a trope, you know. And I also think it's interesting hearing all the conversations about like Alexander the Great and Napoleon. I've read very few things that actually talk about either character. So I, I'm very intrigued by this. I do like historical fiction stuff, but I very rarely, rarely read historical fictions that's like not set in the US or, honestly, I do read some that are like in Latin America, but never on like, 
Europe or Asia too much or today's Wednesday and my family is doing Thanksgiving today instead of Thursday because half of my family works on actual Thanksgiving so we're just doing it today so I'm probably not gonna read very much today maybe I will but probably be tomorrow because everybody else is doing Thanksgiving so I'm just gonna be chilling at home which is great I've also been playing uh, Pokemon Pearl and I love it so I know this is gonna, so I'm gonna do a travel vlog and like all this stuff. Um, my other vlogs, I don't really show around and show things, but we are taking a slight trip to a, a different state for a little bit. I'm not gonna show my family's faces just to protect their privacy. I didn't even ask if they wanted to be in the vlog, but I'm just not, I don't want, I show my cats and stuff, but I don't ever show my friends or family in things anyways that typically go online. And I'm definitely keeping that vibe through this. Even though they probably would be okay with it. Because you know this is a reading channel. I just I just don't want to do that. So I'm not. So nobody's faces are going to be shown. So it'd probably just be a bunch of scenery shots. Or me just doing selfies. I don't actually know yet. We will see when we get there. I'm never done like vlogging out in the real life. And felt kind of funny. The two, two or three shots I took involving plane stuff. So... We will see, we will see. But it is, I haven't been in my home state or seen any of my family in over two years. So seeing all this woods and it actually being really cold in the morning and night, I have not had like an actual winter in forever. I know this is still fall and it gets warm here during the daytime, but when I got off that plane and it was 29 degrees. I have not experienced that in a couple of years. So it was, it was definitely wild to me. I love the view of my grandparents' yard so much. You know, you can't see anything. We're out in the country, but you know, I've been living somewhere a lot more crowded and I haven't seen the leaves change in forever. I moved out of the south like three years ago but where i moved to definitely had a winter it had too long of a winter honestly like it snowed take more months of the year than not so it's just it's nice to see anything and i am not sad that i've missed over 100 degrees humid heat in the summer so and it gets freezing freezing in january and february so i think i picked the best time to come you know most of the leaves have fallen also, I know I just showed all that stuff, but I just wanted to show this old truck. I know it probably doesn't seem like this truck matters much, but my grandpa still has this truck. It does not drive anymore, but he has it because it was his baby for so many years. I grew up in this truck, bright green, and I wish it still worked, but this was from like the early 90s, and it makes me feel so nostalgic to see it. When he did drive it, on the top it says, it said Taco, because that was his nickname. But I have so many memories in this truck. I'm not going to show the other vehicles, because they still work, but... And none of them have the same significance as this old boy, you know? I was right. I did not read Wednesday and I didn't read Thursday. We did our Thanksgiving on Wednesday, as I said, and I just hadn't read. Um, I guess it's because I jumped so many hours ahead. I guess I was still a little jet lag. I definitely feel way better than I did. So I'm going around town. I'm going to just look at some prices and stuff, you know, wear a mask, even though nobody here is wearing one. But that's not the point. So I'm just going to listen to War and Peace be an audiobook and I guess I'll update when I do more reading. I know I won't be able to listen to hours and hours but I'm gonna come home and probably physically read it because it seems a little easier to physically read than the audio but the audio that I picked is the one that's free on Audible Plus isn't bad but I can't walk around with that big book you know. So I'll be back. I have made it to volume two today and I finally got into the 300s. That is not a lot of pages in this thick book, but you see I'm on volume two. 
I have not started yet. I decided to go ahead and make this video before I get to the next part. We are driving to North Carolina in a couple of days. Um, so that's like a five hour drive. So I'll probably listen or read then too, you know, and I got another long flight next week. So I got plenty of time to get through this. And the first part, I don't know if I have as much to say as I would think or like, because you know, 300 pages is like a small novel, you know, and, but you know, there's like a, literally a thousand more pages. And most of this was definitely just set up and I can see why it would be separate, I guess, than the other volumes or whatever. I don't know if this was originally released separately. I don't know the exact history of all the stuff with Toy Story, but I didn't know anything about this book going in except for the fact it was Russian and it was long and that was literally it. That was the only thing I knew. I didn't even know it was about the, the, the I didn't even know it was about Napoleon. You know, I didn't know any of this stuff. So I went in this as a surprise. And at first I didn't really like the party stuff, but I kind of got more used to it. I think I was just tired and cranky and a lot of classics do parties and it has to be a particular way for me to sit down and actually enjoy it. And I didn't expect there's to be such a heavy, or at least on this first volume, to be so war heavy. Like, I knew the title's War and Peace, but I, like I said, I knew nothing about it, so I didn't even realize it was a war book. It does not surprise me, though. And I do think it's interesting, and like, I think it's the third part I read, or the fourth, I think it's the third and fourth. It was definitely more military based than the other parts. And it's interesting because um, I only know brief stuff about these wars, right? Because it's not exactly what's the big selling point in American history classes. And I did take some upper level history classes for like my minor in college, but I didn't focus on this. I focused in other areas of history. And I like seeing the division within the Russian society because there are French speaking Russians and some that definitely kind of more side with, you know, French. And then other ones like, no, we need to be true Russians and like keep these dudes out and seeing like how the Russian army doesn't feel ready or at least this section of the Russian army, but they're in Austria and the Austrian army isn't doing good. So Russia is going to have to go in sooner than they expect and Anna or Anna I'm not sure which one is the correct pronunciation but I'm gonna say Anna and you know it's interesting seeing her going through the higher class of Russian society and how strategic she has to be for certain things and even though it is peaceful you know like it's definitely not easy at least the way she's going about it I know nothing about upper class in any society, American, Russian, whatever. Never been a part of that. So it's interesting to see those dynamics and these characters are definitely starting to feel more fleshed out and this world definitely feels more real. I'm, there are parts that are definitely slow, but it's just interesting enough for me to keep going. This is definitely more of an interesting read when I'm not tired in the airport. Or maybe this is the first couple of chapters are rough, I don't know. But there's like, like not a whole lot to say unless you want me to go into every detail about uh, some kind of soiree or whatever. Or about the war parts. I'm not sure how I want to go about it, but I can definitely see this introduction. And this is, you know, I guess a more literature side of things. A more introduction of, you know, his title is War and Peace. And that's a very complex relationship, you know. And you definitely see the beginnings of that. And... I'm definitely interested to see where things go, you know, and, you know, just, there's a lot going on. Napoleon's a lot. These people are a lot. They're a little dramatic, but so far, so good. I'm going to keep going. I made that shake. Uh, my phone is on a heater. It's turned off, but maybe I shouldn't just slam on my book, but yeah, um, I got a long way to go. So I'm not going to talk as much as I would like about this part just yet. I've definitely made a lot more progress. I'm thinking about just waiting till the end of volume two. Also, I'm waiting on my best friend to come pick me up and me and a few other of my chick friends and her, obviously. We're going to have a spin night party at one of my 
friend's houses that's a girl and we plan on watching corny movies, eating pizza, and drinking root beer, just like, you know. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this book, but not a whole lot. The chapters reset, so like when it goes to part five, it'll go back to chapter one. It's a little confusing, especially when my audiobook literally does each chapter as a next number, so you actually have to listen to see where you're at if you wanna go back and forth, like it goes through like chapter, in the hundreds, you know, because there are like hundreds of chapters in this. So it's an interesting little thing and I'll talk more about the story story later, but I just want to talk about how, how kind of interesting that format is. As you see, I got to volume three, so I am about halfway. I think I am basically halfway because I think the 1300s are just like the bonus of the summaries, that kind of thing. I'm just in this because I just took a shower and I don't like to get ready instantly, but we're about to make like a five hour drive-ish to um, North Carolina and I don't want to do it in the car and, you know, I like to be lazy before I actually get ready <laughs> for like 30 or so minutes and, you know, I don't want to be rushing, so I'm doing this now. So volume two was a lot more interesting than volume one. There's a lot more drama. There's a lot more like going on and everything was more eventful. This is more of the uh, peacetime. So naturally a lot more petty drama comes up, right? And it's a lot of romantic drama. So Nikolai returns to Moscow and he realizes he's still in love with, uh, what's her name? Sonia, but it's best to not marry immediately for whatever reason. Like, like I said, this was a lot. And then, um, then he decides he has no interest in her anymore. So he decides to go be a hoe, go be gambling. And then, uh, there was a rumor about Prince Andre dying. He is not dead. It was kind of stupid. And then, um, there was a duel, which was fun. And you got to see somebody die. <laughs> in the peaceful time, which I did not expect. That was interesting. And this is duel with like really old guns, not swords and stuff. And I know they had duels with guns. Like I know we had a president die that way, but, but I think duel I always thinks swords. I don't know why, but my brain always, always goes straight to swords. I don't know why. I don't know why. And then it's like Christmas time and uh, Sonia looks really beautiful. And then Nikolai's like, you know what? I'm done being a hoe. You're gorgeous. I'm in love with you again. Let's get married. And she's like, okay. And uh, there's basically like talks about an elopement and Natasha isn't too happy. And then Natasha has an affair and that causes drama. And what is his face that she had an affair with? Basically gets kicked out of town. It's really, really uh, dramatic. And Sonia, uh, it's just like a lot with the princes and princesses and it's all romantic, all drama. And I kind of like that more. Like I like war movies and stuff. Well, don't get me wrong, but I like hearing the inner monologue and I do like the action, but I think Toy Story does a lot better with the interpersonal stuff than the uh, war aspects. But you know, they do talk about Napoleon a little bit here, but I know those parts, but the interpersonal <laughs> love drama that's like a soap opera just sticks out so much more to me maybe that's just a uh, preference you know everybody's a little different but yeah volume two is a lot more interesting a lot more thick and I was thinking like do I really want to finish this like I didn't really want to DNF but I was like this is a big book you know because I was trying to give it more of a chance and it's definitely better now and I'm gonna definitely keep going
return to Hawaii tomorrow technically and I finished War and Peace. I know I didn't talk about Volume 3 or Volume 4 or either the epilogues just because I was in a tiny cabin with three other people and <laughs> my little southern family is extremely, extremely loud, which, you know, they're having fun doing whatever. I went back and forth between the audiobook and the physical book. We drove to a few places, you know, it took five hours to get there, five hours to get back, stopped and did multiple things. So I had plenty of time to read and I wasn't trying to fix my sleep schedule because of the time zone differences. So I've been kind of staying up anyways. And I have thoughts and I, you know, I really considered updating more. It's just, I had nothing to say. Cause you know, peace is obviously like the nobility and the people who aren't in the war. And then there's the actual war, you know, and I kind of like that even though Russia won, it does not act like Russians had nothing bad to them. It showed a lot of how even the people who weren't in war dealt with grief and everything. And I really liked how when Pierre was uh, with the other prisoners and he realizes all the glam and all those things are not what truly make you happy. Like they can definitely help make you happy, but if you don't get basic needs, it's almost impossible to be happy or be as happy as possible, you know? Like, you may make the best of a bad situation, but those needs comes before, like, you know, having the finest clothes and worrying about the social lights and all that. And it kind of makes them think more. And, you know, like, I thought it was interesting when, like, I think his name was Plankton, just let himself get shot by the Russians, and, you know, there, there's a lot. You saw some from both sides, and Natasha and Mar uh, Maria, not Maria, Ma Myra, Myra. I don't know why I want to keep saying Maria, but it, it was interesting how they dealt with things, especially being women, and it was a lot, there's a lot of really top, like heavy war stuff in this. And as I said, I did not know what to expect going into this. I think Toy Story did such a great job at the human experience. I don't read a lot of technical war stuff, so I don't know how well he did with that compared to like everything else. But, you know, there's that. Uh, but I think he did grief and emotions and even the dramatic soap opera feel of you know all the love triangles and the affairs I think he did a great job with that and you know I could talk a little more I just don't know if if it's something that you just want to talk about in the video like like I said it's like really war heavy and a lot of social light stuff but I didn't live in that time. I don't know much about French culture. I don't know enough about Russian culture to tell you how authentic it is, but it felt authentic. These felt like real people, real fleshed out. And I think I'm definitely gonna check out another Toy Story book. And I got this huge monster off my list. I've had this on my list forever. I like this book a lot, but it's heavy. So I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna keep it. I only spent like $5 on this and uh, I'm thinking about just seeing if some one of my family members want to read this. Most of them, or for some reason, most of the females in my family are readers, but like none of the men are. I have no idea why, but I want to see if maybe they want to read this. I do want to keep it because I think the cover's pretty and I feel proud that I read the entire thing, but it's such a thick book and I don't want to be carrying it because I have an eight hour layover, you know? But we'll see. I probably will keep it because I'm like, that is proof of a beast, you know? I actually had plans. I was going to be like, you know what? I never annotate. I never do nothing like this, especially because I mostly do library books. But it's like, I'm going to annotate. I'm going to do all this. I just can't get myself to do it. Like just dog earing this book a little bit I did made me feel bad, even though it was bent from the owner before me. But yeah, I am really impressed with the character work. I don't, and I looked up some stuff about this. Apparently the wars 
in this were real. I knew the historical people were real, but a lot of the characters were fake. Cause you know, it's historical fiction, like, you know, Napoleon, Alexander, all those people were real. But I didn't know, you know, reading this, which I knew, uh, like, I knew that all of this was a thing. I just didn't know details about it. As I said, this is not the stuff that I learned in school. This was not the history classes. Like, I took things on. Like, most of the stuff I know about Russia was basically, like, the Cold War. Because I took a Cold War class. And I just knew random bits, you know? Like, I know about the Romanovs as a very... I can give you a paragraph. I can't tell you details. So, it was kind of interesting to get something that's really out of my element definitely a different writing style I do think this could have been shorter by a lot but I feel proud to read this would I recommend this it would really depend on the type of person you are but I don't think this is a you have to read this in your lifetime but there are some people I know in my life that would enjoy this but this was a Big, huge of a book. The translation is Anthony Briggs. Uh, my audiobook, as I mentioned, not Anthony Briggs, but it's the one that's free on Audible Plus. So whoever does that, there are definitely word differences. I think I like the physical reading more, but the audiobook helped with this a lot. I don't think I could have read nearly as much because the font is tiny. I know in all my videos I talk about font size, but you know I don't have the best vision I don't I'm not like super vision impaired but I do need glasses and you know I know there's people who are a lot worse than me that might appreciate to know where all the flaunt stuff is I I am a mess right now I'm about to go pack up and I think I'm going to end the video here even though no makeup no nothing uh because I mean what am I going to say when I get home I finish the book and the trip's over I really was unsure if I was going to make it through, but during our mini road trip definitely helped out a lot. And so I guess we'll see what I read at the airport. I got eight hours. Oh.